This is Stephanie at High Tower Stitching. Today I have a short video. I've been working on my quilt that I'm adding the yo-yos to the top of, and this is going to be fine stitching on the yo-yo quilt. Rather than piecing a quilt and then putting the yo-yos on the top of that, I made it like almost like a comforter. I went ahead and I took my uh, backing my sandwich, or to make my sandwich, and I put my batting in there. Then I took the top, and if you remember on the top, I had already sewn these, I wanted to, I was gonna sew these strips that are blue in different shades of blue all the way from one end to the other. All right, so I got that going, and I want you to see, this is what I have gotten sewn on so far. And this is actually one of the first times I've looked at how far I've gotten because I would just do a row and I just kept going. It's almost like just regular quilting and because every time you finish a circle, you've got a little piece of your quilt finished. And um, it's, somebody had asked a, a bit about fine quilting and fine stitches, you know. And because this one is going to be a used, a functional one, the quilt, then I want to make sure that it's going to hold together, and that's what this is about. To sew these to the quilt top, I'm just using regular thread, and I don't want anything really harsh, but it needs to be strong, and it can be strong because I'm going to go through quilting fabric. My yo-yos were made out of uh, good quality fabric. My needle is a sharp and it's a little long than I usually use, but it's worked really well all the way through this. Somebody asked me about needles, and I'm so bad that when I find a quilting needle and I start my project, I keep going with that needle, and I've been known to have them snap because I just won't give it up. They will bend, too, and that's sort of been funny. And I've learned that I don't put all of them down at once. I sort of do a row because as you start flipping the quilt around and trying to turn it to stitch, you get what I call pinned. And I got pinned enough when I was putting the blue down. So I'm going to start. I've got an, I've, I'm using a double thread for this. And I've got it knotted at the end. And you can do one of two ways. You can slide it through the sandwich and pull the knot up. Or you can just flip your yo-yo back a little bit and go underneath it. And then you don't have to worry about pulling the needle through. I picked up an extra pin. Okay. And I've rolled this back. I'm going to hold this with my thumb. And I'm going to come over, and what I've learned to do is I go down and pick up a little piece of material, and then I come up almost under the yo-yo and get a small amount of fabric and just pull it up. Okay, and I'm going to go do it again. And the point is, you don't want though these in for this project, I didn't want it to be very visible. So I'm going to go around, go down. Don't go through to the back on this one because I don't want it to show. Then pull it up. I got a nice sharp needle. And by controlling that point, I can catch that fabric all the way around. Now that went great. And that's going counterclockwise. And that went, worked really well. Well, then I got tired of flipping this piece around so when I'd get somewhere I'd actually turn it and I'd take my needle go through the sandwich and I could go over and now I'm going to go clockwise and that was sort of neat because I found I could really pick up small pieces but I want this to be strong, so I'm doing those close together. I go poke it almost straight down. My hand's under there so I know it didn't go through. And I pull my thread through. And you can see, look at how that doesn't show. And I'm going to keep going all the way around till I get 
I, I make it so that I have enough thread to get all the way around. When I get all the way around, you can run your thread around, or what I do is I tie a knot, get myself a knot or even two knots in there, send it back through the quilt sandwich, not through the bottom, and then pull it just like you would on a regular quilt, and the knot's under there, and it's gone. And if you look, you can see they're very small stitches, very close together, so that I can uh, accomplish what I want to do. And one of the other tricks was, this is row 11, this red one right here. And so I've come all the way up through there. Well, that's a lot of fabric. And so you find that half the time I'd set part of the quilt on the chair by me, so it'd be up and I could sew. Some of it I just purely had to roll up. Some of it, especially when I was here in the middle, I just took my hand and took a bunched it and got my hand close enough to it. You see how that works? I can And I can hold that. And then I stitch. Well, I was used to only sewing into that top layer. So I didn't have any of them where I stitched through that back because it's so thick and that works and then, but you still about you can go about halfway around and then you've either got to turn it or you've got to come back and then stitch the other way around but this is really a hoot and I can't wait to get it finished and enjoy all of those colors and if you've got a bunch of yo-yos laying around I think this is going to take about 300 yo-yos and I had a lot of uh, five inch charm squares and that was really nice to cut. But then I had some favorite, fa favorite fabrics and I went back and did that. That was short and that was sweet. But I hope you enjoyed f seeing how I try to do fine stitching on this functional quilt. This is Stephanie at Hightower. Thank you for watching. Any notes I have will be in the description. If this was helpful or fun to you, Please subscribe and hit like.